In Part A, we are asked to determine the resistance during the operation of this space heater. We are given a potential difference, symbolized by V, as well as a power value, symbolized by P. So we need an equation that relates V, P, and the resistance R. We look at the resistive dissipation equations and we can see that power is equal to potential difference squared divided by resistance. So we'll end up using that equation for part A of this question. Why don't we first solve this equation for resistance? So we'll multiply both sides of the equation by resistance so that it cancels out on the right hand side and then we can divide both sides of the equation by power so the power cancels on the left side. So we are left with resistance equaling potential difference squared divided by power. We'll plug in the known values of 120 volts for the potential difference and then the 500 watts for power. And then when we compute this, we should get 28.8 and the standard unit of resistance is ohms. So this is the correct answer to part A. In part B, we are asked to determine the rate at which electrons are flowing. We can look at that quantity as the number of electrons per second. So that would be basically divided by a unit of time, the number of electrons per unit time. And to get that quantity, it turns out that it will be beneficial to first find the current, which is symbolized by I. So we know that power is equal to current times potential difference. We can divide both sides of this equation by the potential difference. So we can see that current is equal to power divided by potential difference. Let's plug in the 500 watts for the power and the 120 volts for the potential difference. And of course, we can do this out and we get 500 into 120 is 4.17. Now the standard unit of current is amps, but I want you to notice you can also write that as coulombs per second. And the reason that's helpful is because we can take the 4.17 coulombs per second and we can convert that into the number of electrons per second. We can do that because we know that one electron has a magnitude of charge 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. So if you multiply your current by this conversion factor, the coulombs will cancel out, and of course you'll be left with electrons per second, which is exactly the quantity that we wanted. So basically divide your current, 4.17, by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th, and you will end up with 2.60 times 10 to the power of 19 and again the unit will be in electrons per second and that is the correct answer your homework system might not have the selection of electrons per second so oftentimes they will omit the word electrons and they'll just have it as one over seconds which can also be written as an inverse second. So any three of these would be the correct answer.